So, good. So, um, hi, we've got some people coming in, which is great. Perfect. So, how, how are you doing then, Dylan? I, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you, Adam? Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, just let the guys come in and we'll get going a few Perfect. minutes after the hour. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, are you on your own there today in that room or do you have? I, I'm, I'm mostly on my own. I have a, a adorable puppy. She's actually playing behind me. I think she lost her bone in the chair. Uh, so she's uh, she's keeping me company oh, today. Sorry. Yeah. She got a bath this morning and she doesn't really love that. Um, but she, I think she's over it now. Okay. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, her name's Nellie. Oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah little Nellie. Oh, there she is. Look at her. Yeah. Having a good time. She might, I might need to let her out at some point. I'll let others oh, open the door. She, she likes to, to, you know, wander around the house and do her thing. Yeah. Sometimes I keep, keep her in here to keep tabs on her, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. We've got a dog as well. She's not here today because she's not that well behaved. So Okay. Uh, a bit, bit chaotic. Um, yeah, okay. So I think we'll give it a couple more minutes and then we'll yeah. get going, Dylan, if that's all right. That sounds great. That sounds great. Um, where, where are the majority of uh, attendees dialing in from? I think they're, I mean, Europe, Europe, um, yeah. and I think UK. Um, so, you know, we'll see, see how everyone gets on. So, okay, it's two minutes past. Um, Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining our webinar today. And this is, for those of you who've been here before, this is our B2B growth webinar. We hope you're all safe and well. We're very excited to be discussing a huge new update from HubSpot that is going to um, make a big difference. Um, and we are gonna really talk about that today, how that's gonna help you power up your sales and marketing with what we call custom objects. We're going to talk a little bit more about what exactly that is. But um, in terms of the, uh, the team today, it's myself, I'm Adam Lewis. I am co-founder and solutions architect at BBD Boom. And we help ambitious B2B companies grow faster with HubSpot. So we're a full service agency across marketing hub, sales hub, service hub, custom integrations, CMS and anything else that you guys bring out, Dylan. Um, we're there to help people make the most of it, really. And obviously, we've got Dylan. Dylan, hi. Thanks so much. Hi. How's it going? Yeah. Good. Thank you very Happy much. Happy to be here. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about what, what you look after at HubSpot. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dylan. I'm a product manager on the HubSpot CRM. I've been working on the CRM for three years now, three or four. I've been on the product team for, for just over that. Um, Right now, I focus on helping customers store and structure their data inside of the CRM. And so that, that means a lot of things. That means, you know, properties getting data in with import and export, how the data gets viewed on the record page, um, and then obviously adding data layers like custom objects. And so uh, I've worked all over the CRM um, functionality and, and, and features um, over, the, over the past couple of years. But this last year, I've been focused on nothing but custom objects. Uh, so September 22nd, uh, about a month ago, a little over a month ago, was a huge day for me um, and the whole team. Obviously, we, uh, we launched Custom Object. It was very cool. Um, so we're, we're on to the next thing, but uh, happy to talk about, about Custom Objects today and, and what they mean for everyone. Brilliant. And, and, and you know, the, the word is a bit weird. The whole concept's a bit unusual. So this isn't, as you can see from Dylan, this isn't all about geeks. This is about how do we use this technology and the, these new features so the agenda is introduction to custom objects, uh, which Dylan's going to take us through. He's going to go and share his screen and do all that great stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about two real life use cases that we're working on. Um, bizarrely, we're actually going to tell you about maybe you shouldn't use custom objects um, or some in certain situations make you aware that there are alternatives to custom objects. So we're looking at the alternatives as well. And then we're going to walk through you know, okay, so you've listened to this, you've heard all about custom objects. How do we actually make this real? What, what a guide to your first implementation and Q&A. So what I would say is please do um, jump in with questions at any point really and just throw them in and we're happy to field them as we go. 
So, um, Dylan, I think it's over to you, really. Now you're going to share your screen, I think, and, and take us into, uh, well, before we do that, um, you know, I've got to ask you, what is a custom object? What is an object? Yeah, yeah, we'll start high level. Um, and just a heads up, Adam, I think your, your navigation's highlighted. So I see okay. like your, your navigation bar would um, popped up. I don't know how to, okay. I mean, it's, it's not in the way, but just. Okay, so you know. that's cool. Uh, anyhow. <laughs> um, what is a custom object? So for those of you who are HubSpot customers who have been HubSpot customers for a while, um, or who are just getting started with HubSpot um, or have used any CRM really, you're probably familiar with what objects are, whether you know them by that name or not. Um, custom object or objects really are the, the way in which you store your data in a, a system. And so in HubSpot, when we, when we kind of first started HubSpot a long time ago, we had the, the contacts object. Um, contacts are people, I am a contact, Adam's a contact, you are all contacts, um, and they're stored as such. Contacts work at companies, which is another object. And so we built that object uh, in the HubSpot CRM to help customers represent that data structure. Um, and then we, we, we kind of realized, okay, so we had contacts and companies object, but our customers are moving into the sales space. So we built the deals object. And then again, into the service space, we built the take the object, right? And those have kind of aligned with the way that we build hubs and the way that we kind of um, like kind of approach our, our system really. Um, and so we've got all these, these types of data. And I, I think what we realized as we, as we built this data out, as we like, we're like, okay, how do we grow this CRM? How do we, how do we do a better job for our customers and help them grow better? The answer is, is really to help them match the data in their CRM to the data in their business and the data their business cares about. Um, but we, we couldn't do that on our own, right? Like every business has its own unique data entities, thing, different things that it care, cares about, um, different attributes that, that really matter to that business. Um, and so it was an uphill battle for us. Like, do we go off and build a shipments object for somebody who delivers things? Do we go off and build a cars object for somebody who sells cars? Uh, or a houses object and a property listings object and a puppies object for somebody who takes care of puppies all day. Like we couldn't do that. Uh, that would that would obviously just be very, uh, that would be a lot of work for us and it wouldn't be very efficient. And so we built this thing called custom objects to help a, a business represent their accurate and complete data in their CRM because that's what a CRM needs to work in the first place. And so that's that's what custom objects do. They, they give a custom objects customer and a business the opportunity to Build data, structure data exactly as they need to to match their business, uh, because that's what a that's what a CRM needs. Brilliant, thank you so much. Um, yeah, of course. So, do you want to jump in now and have, show us the demo or show us the stuff? Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm gonna hop around uh, HubSpot for for a few minutes here and, and show show you all what um, what custom objects looks like. Uh, Adam, could you pull down screen share so I could uh, kick that off? Sure. Very cool. Um, all righty, Adam, thumbs up. you've got this developer doc up. You can see this? Yeah, we can see it a little yeah. bright light and clear, right. yeah. Fantastic, okay. So custom objects, where do they all start? They start with the defining the custom object. Um, now you'll notice I'm not in the HubSpot app, I'm actually on an API doc. Um, the reason is custom objects start uh, with an API call. They start, um, the object definition experience is done via API. So if you have a developer on staff, uh, this is actually a pretty simple API, not a lot of uh, requests, inputs that to use. Um, partners have been doing this with customers. There are apps in the marketplace that do this with customers. Um, there, there's a lot of different ways to get your object defined, um, but you'll start here. So you'll start by uh, defining your object schema, creating a schema, uh, give it names, plural names, required properties, all that kind of good stuff, uh, associations, what it's associated to, um, and that will get you started. And then you have a custom object. Uh, now, Adam's gonna talk about this in a bit, but obviously it should never be that easy. You should never just walk into HubSpot and just like start punching numbers into the system and, and build a custom object. It, it's, it's actually, there's a lot of work you should put in up front. It's, it's pretty deliberate. You wanna be calculated in your approach. You wanna make sure it matches what your business needs. Um, you wanna make sure it's going to scale because at the end of the day, this is like you, the, the core of the lifeblood of a business is the way your data uh, is represented in your CRM. So um, it's not a fly by night operation. It's, uh, it's, it's something that you'll, you'll really wanna put some energy into. But once you're ready to hit go, you can do that. Um, you hit go on this object definition um, endpoint and you're live. 
And so what I want to do now is hop into a hub and show you all what custom objects look like across the HubSpot product. For those of you who have used the HubSpot product before, this is going to be an amazing demo in one sense and a very boring demo in the other sense. The reason that is, is that custom objects look and feel and act and behave exactly like the rest of HubSpot. It's exactly everything that you've, you've gotten used to, that your team has learned, that you've coached your team on, that you've used in multiple portals. That it is just woven into HubSpot. There's very, very little learning curve here. Um, but I'll show off anyway. I'll show you all what it, what it means and, and where custom objects uh, stretch throughout the app. And, and we'll start with properties, you know, a core idea in, in representing your business. And once you have the object is to create properties, store details on the object. And you'll see in this hub here, I have a few new um, custom objects. I've got a subscriptions object. You can imagine uh, HubSpot selling one of those, like you subscribe to HubSpot software. I've got a services object. Again, you can imagine HubSpot's business here is an easy example for us, um, is that you know we offer professional services where you can sign up and get con consulting there. Uh, referrals object, if, you know, somebody refers you or you refer by partner and a company locations object. So I've got four in here, um, but we'll focus on the services and the subscriptions object for now. Um, you can hop into the properties UI and you'll see service properties. Create a property experience is, is just like um, how you create a any other property. So you can say this is like, maybe we'll, we'll call this one service type. Oh, I already have one of those, give this demo uh, a few times. Service type new. And field types are just as available as they would be with, uh, with any other object. We don't have scores and we don't have file uploads quite yet, um, but coming soon on both of those fronts, you can do the majority of um, property type definitions here. Uh, let's just call this an, um, a drop down select property. Um, and so we have two services here, uh, consulting and development. And just like that, you got a custom object property. Simple, easy to build, and just like using any other properties experience. Yes, nice. Yeah. Um, it's 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 you'll you'll pick it up quick. And so once you're once you've got a few custom objects defined, right? Like you can use our import tool to bring custom objects in. Looks and feels the same. I'm gonna, I'm going to skip over that demo. But then you have a list of custom objects. Here are all my custom objects in, in a grid view. Here, um, this cannot be accessed. Just a little caveat by the nav. You'll you'll hop into contacts or companies, for example, click this button up here on the top left and you'll see all of your custom objects. So here's a services custom object, click into a record, got the preview panel, looks exactly like the rest. And let's, you know, let's, let's have a look at the record. There's a full on custom object record. It's got properties on the left, a timeline in the center, you know, it's associated with a contact, a company, there's a deal associated with it um, and it looks and feels just like uh, any other object. So here's our cleanup data entry service object. Nice. Dylan, you can obviously associate it with other custom objects, right? Yes, you can. Uh, so if I have a, uh, a service and a subscription, right? Like you buy HubSpot Enterprise and you get a professional onboarding experience with that, you can associate those two objects together. Um, notes. Same thing, right? Take a note, logs to the object, just like that. Now, that's a lot of the CRM functionality, right? You, you structure the data, you bring the data in, you add properties, you, you know, kind of interact with the record, um, but that's not all HubSpot offers. Obviously, our offering shines as you kind of get into the, the out, outstretches of the tool, right? Yes. Uh, automation functionality, workflows, reporting. Um, so I wanna show off some of that too. Um, the first is workflows. And workflows is, you know, by many, by many standards, probably the most powerful tool in HubSpot, the most unique. You can do so, so, so much with workflows. Um, and custom object workflows are no exception. Uh, so once you've got your custom objects here, you can see we've got custom object-based workflows. Or if you were to create a standard workflow with contacts, companies, deals, you'll see custom object criteria in there. Um, so I've got a, a workflow ready that I, that I made recently um, that creates services and assigns owners. So you can, uh, you can uh, think about HubSpot's business here, right? We sell a subscription to our software. Um, 
It's starting in a few days. We need to make sure our internal teams are prepared for that. We need to assign ownership. We need to make sure our internal teams uh, follow up and this workflow will do just that. So you've got a service type confirmed, start date less than seven days. What's gonna happen in this workflow is we're gonna copy properties um, from start date to service start date. We're gonna send an email to the HubSpot representative, letting them know that consulting is starting in one week. Um, we're gonna create a brand here, depending on the type of consulting, whether it's ongoing or premium consulting um, and, and do different tasks based on that, right? So, um, you know, you can, you can imagine a business had all of this infrastructure, all of this stuff in another system before custom objects. Mm -hmm. They were paying, you know, for another subscription or they were storing data somewhere else or they were using another tool to do all of this. Uh, with custom objects, you can bring it all into HubSpot. It's, it's, it's really cool. Dylan, can I just comment on that as well? I think, you know, of one course. of the most powerful use cases is where people have another system, like a provisioning system, some other type of CRM, where they do have these objects. And now, you know, maybe they don't need the other system, or maybe they still need that system, and they can now sync that object to these objects. So there's a real, um, you know, consistency in the way that the data transfers. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really powerful. One of one of the beta customers we worked with in, in custom objects, um, you know, this is dating all the way back to February. He and we, we kind of worked with him all throughout this beta. He had uh, four different systems that his reps needed to work out of. You know, popping in between tabs, copying data, moving it back and forth. He was paying for all of them. Wow. He's on a HubSpot professional license. His upgrade to enterprise actually ended up being like half of the cost that it was wow. to just cancel the other four systems. And it made all of his rep stays easier. And yeah. so, you know, the consolidation here, not only does it provide uh, bottom line business value, but it also just provides like peace of mind for your reps in a, in a single place for people to just really get stuff done. Nice. Um, very cool. Um, you can hop over here in, in reporting, right? Like any custom object, most custom objects are going to rely on reporting. You want to see how your business is performing in a given segment. How are your shipments going? How many subscriptions have we sold? Are our services on track? What does that all look like? Um, custom object reporting works out of the box, works just like standard reporting. Um, so I built a few reports just there. Uh, here are like, you know, count of subscriptions by type. You can see an annual subscription breakdown, a monthly subscriptions breakdown. And this report is configurable like any other, right? You can turn it into a pie chart, a donut chart, bar chart, you can change the colors. This is all powered by the HubSpot platform, right? So it works and feels exactly like you're used to. You can right. add you know, custom variables, new filters, new properties, all that, export the data. It's all available for you in one place. Brilliant. Um, and so, you know, the, the custom object functionality includes all of these things. It includes properties, workflows, reporting, records customization, records, pretty robust CRM functionality, uh, but we're still working on custom objects, right? Um, you know, inbound was a huge launch and there was a ton of functionality delivered that day, um, but it, it wasn't totally complete. I, I'd give us about an 80% across the product. So there are a few places where we're, we're still working on key functionality to help custom objects um, be a better tool uh, to help your businesses grow. And so I wanted to show off just one of those places today, uh, and that is the form school. So the forms uh, tool historically has only been usable uh, with contact data. So contact would submit a form and you know, you'd know you register all that into a, a contact record. Mm -hmm. Recently, we added ticket data to that. So contact could kind of fill information about their ticket. Um, but what you, we realized is when you look at some of these key workflows customers need with custom objects, and Adam will talk about use cases in a second, you'll start to, start to see them. Um, custom object properties and forms are very important. Um, let's take like a very simple example of a car dealership. Uh, if I want to request service for my car, or I want to maybe even request to buy a car, I'm going to fill out contact data on a form, but I'm also going to fill out car data. Okay. Th that car data is not contact data. It is absolutely not. It's, yeah. it's totally unique. It's stored differently. The business cares about it differently. And that's, that's key. That's crucial. And so uh, instead of having our customers, what they've been doing in the past, and I'm super excited for this update just fundamentally, is collect it all as contact data, like mold it all over to other types of objects, stored in deals, all this kind of stuff. Um, we're allowing all types of object properties to be brought into forms. It's really cool. 
Um, so you can see subscription properties over here on the left. Uh, like I have a referred by, just drop this in a form. Um, and, you know, as part of this subscriptions object, we have this really cool warning here of like, you know, you need more properties, you need to do different things here. Um, I'll just ignore that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this is telling me my form is, is fundamentally broken, which is a great warning to have. Yeah. Um, but, you know, now you can collect this data in a form. You can collect data about the car somebody wants to buy or the car that they have, the VIN number and all that stuff. You can make the associations and you don't need to worry about like that gigantic data move after the fact of having data on the contact, moving over to the deal, moving over the ticket or the custom object. Um, it's all handled up front on the form. Um, and so this is coming soon. This is an example of some of the functionality we're building out. Um, some other things coming soon, like pipelines and Salesforce sync. Uh, you know, our, our, our team's really focused on that um, and, and kind of rounding out, finishing the swing here um, over the next next few months. Um, but this is this is the, the one that's probably closest to being delivered. Uh, it's in a small beta now, and, and we're bringing it uh, we're bringing it around around to all customers over the next few weeks. So we're pretty right. excited about this, and and really all the functionality custom objects has has delivered to date. Wow, I mean, it, it's it's almost like such a big thing that I mean, even ourselves as Diamond Partners, you know, we've spent a few weeks getting our heads around it, and obviously we've had heads up on it anyway, but. I think it for everyone listening. Don't you know? Take 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 some time to to think about how the data is stored in your business at the moment and what how this could be applied. And as we'll talk about in a minute, you don't have to do it. Uh, and there's other alternatives that we'll talk about. So Dylan, that's great. Thanks a lot. So yeah. shall I go and talk about these um, two use cases that we're working on? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So share my screen. And um, can you see that property? Not quite yet. Oh, here we go. Bingo. Yeah. So two use cases for you that we're working on with clients. Uh, one, so first of all, relates to property buildings. Now, we've got a client who's a telecoms company. They connect their, basically their lines to a building. So, and, and they only service certain buildings, right? So they might not cover certain zip codes or postcodes, but they might cover others. So it, ultimately they're selling to whoever's in that building. <laughs> so the building is like the customer almost. So and in, in that building, there might be a mix of businesses. There might be multiple businesses. There might be multiple businesses and residential individual people. So that, and, and in terms of their current HubSpot setup, so the way that they've worked so far and is not optimal is they've been using companies to represent properties and then using custom properties for postcodes and addresses and all that sort of stuff. And of course, the limitation of that is that, you know, companies, um, they're, they're not just companies, are they? We're trying to pretend they're properties. And so when you have uh, multiple companies associated with a property, then you can't associate multiple companies to a company unless you start doing parent-child relationships, which just doesn't basically work. Um, so it's very limited. It has limitations in terms of reporting and, and lots of stuff. So here's the use case and here's the solution. So what we're, we're working on is create a new custom object called property. So an example would be 15 Albert Road. And then we can associate um, existing, I suppose you call them standard properties, don't you Dylan, already in the system. So companies, deals, and contacts. So we might say, well, we've got multiple companies associated with objects. We might have deals associated with the custom object, the property, because that property might have two residential deals and one company deal associated with it. Um, and then you associate, in the case of a company, then you would just, as you do normally, the, the contacts, so in this case, Joe Francis, um, would associate with the company there. So you get this kind of neat, neat solution. And um, on the, on the, you know, we talk, we saw earlier, like, you know, in, in, in developer terms, it's called object schema, but what are the properties that we want associated with that object? So property name, you might say, well, what type of property is it? Is it high rise? Is it a terrace building? How many deals have been associated with that property? Because you know, people move in and out of property. So we need to know historically what deals have been associated. What's the value of the deals? Is the sales rep associated to a property? 
So rather than being associated to individual customers, they actually, if you like, their territory is a certain set of buildings. All of that is now possible. What that means for them in terms of powering up their sales and marketing is that they can now send campaigns to specific properties by postcode. We can automate emails when something changes with contacts or companies that are associated with that object. Sales reps get much clearer reporting and analytics. Sales rep get a much clearer view of, hey, what's going on in that property? I want to know what's been involved. What's the timeline? What's the ins and outs of everything that's gone on? And one thing I we touched on was just the integration because this particular client has another system, big um, bit of software somewhere else for provisioning, and they want the two things to be talking the same language. And now we can do that, which is really cool. By the way, if anyone's got any questions as we go through, just raise your hand, chuck the questions in. The other um, example that we're working on is intermediaries. So um, where you've got like a third party who you basically contract to, to the end customer. So our client here is does software and services for corporate events and meetings online. And so they, you know, they talk to the end customer, but actually often the deal is done via the intermediary. So that's, that's great. I mean, in the current setup, they have to use companies, company object and company type. So they have end customer and intermediary, which is, which works, but the limitation is they can't associate the end clients with the company, with the intermediary, because the intermediary will have multiple companies that they're working with that are customers. And again, the child parent thing doesn't work because they're not related companies. They're totally separate companies who's putting deals through the one intermediary. So, hey, presto, the solution is the intermediary object. And again, we might have multiple deals going through with that intermediary. So we have associated deals to that intermediary. So there might be premier service product with a particular company that's being set and we'll have multiple deals and multiple associated companies. We'll obviously have the association of the contact to that deal and the contact to the company that is then related to the intermediary object. But also separately, the intermediary itself has its own contacts. It has its own individuals who might be the day-to-day -day contact for that intermediary and they need to be associated with that as well. Actually, Dylan, the biggest use case here was around attribution. So being able to attribute all the revenue from intermediaries, because often the revenue comes through the intermediary and it's not, it's not easy in HubSpot to say, oh, that, that relates to that end customer, that's that deal. So now we've got that and we're able to join up all the attribution and clearly link it all back. So this is a huge, huge thing for them. So there we go, guys, that's two use cases. There's all sorts of others. You have your own use cases and um, that's what HubSpot's custom objects is here to accommodate. But as I said, Dylan, weirdly, we might be saying, don't it's not always the right option. What are the considerations, Dylan, that these guys need to be thinking about before embarking on using custom objects? Yeah, so um, I think as with all things, like cutting, Adopting custom objects is a big move. It's a big database move. It's going to um, be a lot of work for your for your business, and it's really doing anything is. Um, so I think it's important uh, to consider like kind of where the custom objects product is at. I'll also talk in a, in a minute about exactly like the questions to ask yourself about like when it's ready, when when you think you're ready. Um, but so, some places that the app uh, is is like not not quite there yet right now um, is the first with the Salesforce integration. Um, and so we don't have our native Salesforce integration supporting uh, custom object sync yet. Uh, that said, if you have a particularly ambitious team, um, our custom object APIs are exactly like um, all of our other object APIs. So you could easy, uh, easily write your own kind of like integration here. It's not compatible with the native Salesforce integration. Um, custom objects are not emailable. This is an imp important uh, nuance here, especially because I, I know a lot of folks like kind of gravitate towards creating something that looks like a contacts object, like the students and parents thing comes up a lot in the education space um, or like the students and counselors, I don't think. Um, custom objects cannot be sent through uh, our email infrastructure. 
And that's just like a contact would. And that's likely to be the case for a pretty long time um, for a lot of reasons, for GDPR, for contact pricing, for you know, many, many different reasons. And so you cannot just send an email to a custom object. You can send an email to a contact that is associated with a specific custom object. So I can email my contacts who have a service or who have a, I can email all my parents who have students in a certain state, but I cannot email custom objects directly in any, any type of HubSpot email. Um, they're not compatible with pipelines. This is something our team's working on, but I know that that visualization and the stage and the progress is important for a lot of custom objects. Our team's working on that. Um, and, uh, but as of today, not currently compatible. Um, we don't currently have OAuther support for custom objects. So if you are looking to build an app or an integration that uh, creates custom objects in an account, uh, you cannot use OAuth for that quite yet. We do actually have a um, beta program spinning up around this for, for our app developers here. Um, if you go to the developers.hubspot.com and the custom objects um, page, you'll see that there's a little banner at the top where you can submit your app for review. We're letting these in one by one. We wanna be careful here, but um, we, will, we will support this eventually. And then another limitation here is uh, custom objects cannot be used in lists. Uh, and so you cannot build a contact list with custom object criteria. So if you're looking to email, uh, create a list of contacts who have like a, a, a car associated with them, can't do that quite yet. There is a semi okay workaround, which is to build it as a cross object report, export the data and then pipe it in as a list. I don't love it. Uh, I, it it's possible and we will build it into list natively soon. Uh, but as of right now, it is, it is not quite there yet. So do you want to put things rough, to consider. rough timeline on that one? Uh, I would be shocked if it were not in all customers' hands um, in quarter, the first quarter of next year. Uh, I would also be shocked if it's not in a beta by the end of this year. So. Okay, that's good to know. We'll talk more about betas in a minute. Um, yeah, so there are some challenges. Yeah, um, I, can, I can cover some of these. It's like, uh, just like anything you're really doing in your CRM, like things can get messy. It's a deliberate approach. It's just like building workflows, really, or building at creating a new system get it. there are considerations that you, you should plan this out you should get a whiteboard talk with your team talk with enablement figure out how this is going to work end to end um and, and make sure it's a good fit custom objects or, or really anything you do um in hubspot um explore the alternatives find your best path forward and um and make, make that count um two of my favorite questions to ask yourself before defining a custom object first one is are you looking to actually solve a business problem today? This may seem obvious, but a lot of people, particularly those who are already subscribed to HubSpot Enterprise, who like want to just take advantage of the software we've built, they immediately want to build custom objects. Like I, from, a, from a lift perspective and a value uh, perspective, if, you're not, if your current data structure isn't causing you business problems, why, why invest the energy uh, or the effort? Um, I'm sure many, there's, you know, many cases are experiencing problems that custom objects could solve. We know that that's why we built it. Um, but just make sure you're, you're looking to solve a significant problem. Um, and then categorically, uh, a, a customer actually suggested this to me, um, recently, a HubSpot power user, um, when recommending folks to consider custom objects. And it's just like, is the custom object you're looking to create something your business uniquely measures? And I thought that was a fantastic observation, a fantastic question. Um, if your business is uniquely measuring it, if you don't have a department that cares about it or you don't need to report on it differently, um, it's kind of hard to, to, to find a good use case for that um, with custom objects. Um, some of the examples I gave today or that Adam gave, those all have you know, business verticals around them. You measure how many buildings you sell, you measure uh, how many referrals are made, how many partners, you know, kind of generated income. Adam talked about attribution, even cars. You report on how many cars you sold, all that. It's a, it's a great litmus test. I really like this question of, of, is this something your business uniquely measures? So think about those two questions before you get started. Uh, make sure you've got a yes to both. Okay. Um, and now in terms of what I'm going to do now, just take us through a few slides quickly about alternatives now some people may not know about these so if you're asking yourself those questions that dylan posed and you're thinking mm, not really sure but i kind of need some stuff but i'm not sure why we need custom objects briefly we know about custom properties so 
all of you will, will, will know that I hope that you can create your own custom properties for ex the existing objects. And, uh, you know, even in um, deals and, and products that, you know, we can now put in more custom properties for deals and products, which is great. So that's coming out the whole time. So if you want to create, you know, against the deal net commission as a, as a field, great, let's do it. You know, and they can be number fields, formatted, unformatted, etc. So that's an option. Just double check that you, you, you're not, you know, you can't make those work for you. And obviously they can be used in, in virtually every kind of scenario that you'd want to within HubSpot. So that's cool. The other thing is timeline events. Now timeline events, you'll know in the timelines are, we like to say immutable records of interaction, which is mean like, you know, something happened, an event happened at a specific time against a specific record. Um, at the moment they are across contacts, deals, companies, tickets, et cetera. And they're great if what you're trying to do is, is you know, represent something that happened, record something that happened, but we can use those for lists. We can use those for workflows. We can reporting, updating properties. And, you know, if you work with your dev team or somebody like us, we can create custom uh, triggers for that and custom events um, that maybe represent data that you, you want from other systems or, you know, other website events that aren't currently supported by HubSpot, for example. I mean, my favorite is actually CRM cards. So you'll be, you'll know what a CRM card is when you go into your, your records and it's the little boxes on, on, on the right. And, you know, the standard ones are contacts and companies and stuff like that. You, if you're using something like PandaDot, which we know and you know, we love using, it's there. But you can create your own CRM card. So if you're looking for actually, I, I want data against the contact record that is unique and specific to maybe it's coming from another data source. But we just need people to look at it when they're looking at the record. We don't need to manipulate it or, you know, run workflows from it or anything like that. We just need to see it then actually CRM cards is an option. So again, we can work with you and create a bespoke card that takes in using API data from somewhere else and chucks it into any of your you know, companies, contacts, deals, et cetera. So that's fantastic as well, if that's useful. And actually we, well, I call it, it's called Hub DB, but you know, it's the website data table. So if what, you, what you're wanting to do is use unique data um, on your site so you're not really that bothered about what using internally within the crm and running workflows actually all you're trying to do is surface it so typically product pages about pages event page and all the rest of it built into your cms if you're using the cms is this database you just go and roll out a data table like a spreadsheet in minutes and then you know working with your dev team to get front end dev team to get that on your site and that's you know, very much um, the, the type of technology that's used for blog listing pages and things like that. So that's an alternative, um, depending on your use case. Any comments on that, Dylan? Uh, I think those are those are all like great alternatives. I, I think even when you're when you're looking through those, sometimes they're and the answer is like in addition to. Um, and so sometimes you know they're they're fantastic pairings with you know custom objects and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always, a it's always an involved conversation, even, even, you know, sometimes internally I'll get a, a message from a, another hub spotter with, with a sentence or two sentence. And the punchline will be, is that a good fit for custom objects? And my answer is always, there's no way for me to answer that with the two sentences of background. Uh, it involves a legit conversation and a lot of back and forth, a lot of discussion about, uh, goals and intentions and plans and, and all that. So. Um, it is, it's, it's involved. I think, uh, I'm excited that we have partners like, like you all to, to help with these kinds of questions and these discussions, um, that people need because it's, uh, it's, it's high stakes. Your business data has nothing to joke about. So definitely. Thank you very much. So yeah. on that, then we're just going to sort of head towards the end of the webinar now by just some simple steps. So if you're sitting there thinking, great, I have got a rock solid, case here i've been talking about something like this for a long time how do i get started okay so what are the steps first of all business case uh we talked about that um, we're working with clients at the moment on their business cases why do we need it actually it, it, it's almost like generally what we're finding is yeah because hubspot won't let us do this <laughs> it's kind of the the starting point and, and credit to hubspot for doing that 
I mean, one of my favorites is, yeah, well, we don't, we kind of don't need it, but because we've got some workarounds, but they're a bit time consuming and they're not necessarily exactly what we want. Um, so you're kind of getting by with it, but you're wasting a lot of time trying to make that work when this might be a much quicker system. And the other one I, you know, I've seen as well is that actually it's affecting adoption because particularly those organizations that have got, like you said earlier, they're working in maybe two or three different systems and they're thinking, well, over here, I've got my custom objects. I'm, I'm able to, dare I say, Salesforce, you know, I'm in Salesforce and I've got my objects and I'm really happy with it. And I've got to go over here and it's not in there and I don't like that. So I'm not going to go in here. I'm going to spend my time over here where I, where it is. So it, it, that, that could be uh, an important business case. So whatever it is, set out the business case. And then I think you need to spec it out. So as we talked about, we do, you do need a developer to do this. This is not heavy development where any developer that's confident using APIs, this is a breeze. If you don't have one, we'll do that for you and we can talk about that. But I suggest you scope out you know, the relationships between your object and the other objects. Um, as I say, you can, Dylan, you can have up to 10 custom objects. Is that right? Yeah, so you can have up to 10 custom object unique types. Um, so you, know, you can have 10 different custom objects. You can have 500,000 records across all of those. So that's a shared number. So if you, you can have one object with 500,000 records or you can have 10 with 50,000 and you know, however you kind of slice that. Um, however, more are available for purchase. Uh, we have a HubSpot, uh, it's called a limit pack where you could double that number for $500 a month. Uh, and so you can get, you purchase one, you get 20 and 100,000 or, uh, sorry, 1 million records. Uh, and so you kind of, uh, keep upgrading, upgrading there. If, if your business needs it, some do, um, but, but yeah. Okay. Oh, Sally's got to go, but she says, um, she loves the idea of how to apply it to resellers. Absolutely. Sally. Yeah. Well, happy to talk to you more about that. Um, I think that's a really big use case. Um, and on the technical spec then, you know, what are the relationships between the custom objects, if you've got up to 10, and what are the relationships between the individual standard objects and this custom object? What are the properties? What are the property types? Are they number fields? All that sort of stuff. Your developer will, will ask you for that, right? Because otherwise he'll go, oh, well, I don't know what to do with this. So there's the technical spec. There's the build. So, um, Everybody can use, I mean, if, if you've got a developer that's doing a lot of work with HubSpot, they'll have a developer portal. Um, if, if we, you know, for example, we would always build this um, in a development portal so we can test how it works and bring in dummy data and really build that test portal, test it robustly. And then when everyone's happy with it, we'll then bring it into the live environment. And then we start to populate because obviously what all we've done is let's say we've we've now injected into HubSpot this thing called a property object. Well, it doesn't have any data against it. So now we need to put real data in. We need to put all those addresses into it. Um, different options for that, CSV, other types of file import, API import, uh, workflow. So, you know, updating properties of that object through workflow and just doing it manually because obviously you can just go into the record and type stuff in and do all that good stuff there as well. And then finally, making it visual for all the users in HubSpot. So making use of the uh, custom reports, making sure the CRM views are, uh, you know, got the properties in that are relevant to people and lists that like we talked about, I've got some limitations working on it, asterisks, but that's soon to come. Have I missed anything there, Dylan? I think that's the, that's the majority of it. Brilliant. Yeah. That's simple. Um, are there any other questions? I don't, we weren't expecting a lot of questions, Dylan, were we on this? It's, it's, it is a big kind of thing to get your head around. If there are any questions, let us know now and we're happy to discuss them. Um, one question um, is perhaps Dylan, you can talk about some more clients that you've been working with who are, you know, making good use of it. Yeah, uh, I mean, we've we've seen use cases all over. Um, people have seen benefits in in like I don't know. Too, I, I don't want to really go too too into any specifics of individual clients, but I I, th I think some of the the benefits we've seen the the beta customers and the folks I've been working hand to hand with have been um, primarily in consolidation of data and a single place for reps to work. 
um, if you if you're experiencing either of those symptoms, uh, then uh, then custom objects are have have delivered a lot of value so far. So that's fantastic. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay. So um, let us know if you've got any. Now we've got an offer for everybody, everybody yes. who's listening now or when you get this recording. And we, if you let us know that you're interested and give us your portal ID, we will liaise with Dylan and he will ungate you for new betas. And what's in the new beta? Is it the form stuff that you mentioned? Yeah, so we've got forms. Uh, we, we'd be happy to, to give access to folks um, to the forms tool with custom objects. Uh, there's likely a few other things coming down the road too um in line with uh with the list uh tool i mentioned and, and perhaps even the salesforce thing so um reach out to adam get your hub ids his way he will filter them to me and we'll make sure you get access to the newest features um that are available to custom objects brilliant thank you dylan that's really cool yeah. and if you need any other advice well, you can come to bbd boom we're a diamond hubspot partner so in terms of custom objects you might be sitting there thinking i don't have a dev team or my dev team has got more important things to do. Um, so we will help with the design and build and it's fixed price for implementation per object. If you've got other questions like timeline events and all those other things, integrations, we will help you with CRM stuff. And actually, if you just want to sit and talk, I'm happy to just have a 30 minute sort of quick fire brainstorm chat strategy session with anybody who's using HubSpot. Um, so Dylan, that was it really. Thank you so much for um, introducing to this. This is a really big thing. I, I think that it's going to take a while for people to start processing what this can do for their business. But I know for a fact that it's we're having multiple conversations with people about how this is going to make a really big difference. So thank you to you, Dylan, and all your team for doing this, because I'm sure it's not very straightforward in the back end. We really appreciate um, that and your time today. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's always a blast. Um, I'm excited to see how you and, and your customers and, uh, you know, get on with custom objects and make this part of their business. Um, we're always open to feedback, helping our customers grow better with, with tools like this. And we are always building on the, on the product side. So um, keep the feedback coming. Excited to see how this, how this ends up working out. Thanks for having me today. Dylan, really appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. And goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.